Hey everyone, Adam Simmons here from DGTL Infra, short for Digital Infrastructure. New York City is a unique place for its cultural, financial, and entertainment offerings. But what also makes the city unique is how its residents get their wireless connectivity. Unlike most places in America, New York City is so dense that it makes it difficult and in most cases near impossible to provide connectivity with traditional 100 foot plus cellular towers. In this video, we show you the digital infrastructure that connects New Yorkers with their 4G LTE and 5G service. Primarily, this infrastructure takes the form of what are known as small cells and rooftop sites. With that, let's jump in and look at eight recognizable locations in New York to show you how these small cells and rooftop sites are simply hiding in plain sight. So first up is Herald Square in Midtown Manhattan, located at 6th Avenue between 34th Street and 35th Street, where the flagship Macy's department store is located. With thousands of people visiting this store and the hundreds of others around Herald Square every day, creative wireless connectivity solutions are needed. If we pan to the right, we see a pole housing both traffic lights and street lights, but also mounted on this pole at 16 feet in elevation is a small cell. Specifically, we are highlighting the small cell's antenna, which is connected with fiber optic cable that runs down the pole. Next, while still in Herald Square, if you look over at the Verizon and H&M store, we get a sense of how rooftop sites also serve the area. Panning to the very top of the building, at about 130 feet in height, we can see over 10 different antenna panels providing connectivity for Herald Square. We can see that these panels are actually mounted to the top of the building. Next up is the Empire State Building, which rises to over 1,400 feet at its tip. Back at ground level, connectivity is again served through a small cell that is mounted to a street light. In comparison, this small cell sits at a height of only 14 feet, one one hundredth of its neighbor, the towering Empire State skyscraper. This small cell can provide coverage for more than 100 users in about a 1,000 foot radius. This means that it can provide wireless coverage for the entire 34th Street block between 5th Avenue and 6th Avenue, where the Empire State Building is located. Third up is Penn Station, which back in 2019 served 600,000 travelers daily. Just outside of Penn Station, at the corner of 7th Avenue and 31st Street, we actually see two small cells located very close to one another. The closest small cell is mounted on a traffic light pole, while the farther one is placed on a set of street lights. You can begin to see a common theme with these small cells, which is that they need to be mounted on city infrastructure that has power supplied to the site, which both traffic lights and street lights already have. Sitting on top of Penn Station is Madison Square Garden, home to the New York Knicks of the NBA and the New York Rangers of the NHL. Outside of Madison Square Garden, rooftop sites are placed on neighboring buildings which are at lower elevations and have a clear line of sight to the smartphone users down at street level. After zooming in, we can actually see that some of these antennas are attached to the side of the building, while others are mounted on top of the building. Each of these panels are connected via fiber optic cable that runs into or down the side of the building. Panning to the other side of Madison Square Garden, we can see a small cell as well, which is mounted to a set of street lights. And finally, panning further to the left, off into the distance, mounted on the roof of another building, we can see more rooftop sites, enabling connectivity for this highly trafficked area. All in all, a lot of digital infrastructure is needed for this busy stadium and its surrounding area. Let's head up 8th Avenue now to Port Authority Bus Terminal, which previously served 8,000 buses and 225,000 people per day. Directly in front of the terminal, we see a small cell mounted 16 feet above ground level on a pole which serves as both a street light and traffic light. You can also see more rooftop sites in the distance on the bus terminal itself. 
Panning to the right slightly, we see in the middle of the intersection, at about 25 feet in height, what looks to be another example of digital infrastructure. Again, we can see that this device is receiving its power through the same means as the traffic light. Next up is Times Square, a major tourism hub of New York, and also a place where everyone is using their mobile phones to talk, text, photograph, film, and nowadays, live stream. Here we highlight two small cells for you, both at about 15 feet in height, which probably go unnoticed, as everyone is either looking at the digital billboards or are people watching down at street level. Let's now move straight ahead to one of the area's most popular attractions, Times Square's Red Steps, to see if we find any digital infrastructure over there. Interestingly, the steps sit in a fairly open area, with little in the way of city infrastructure to mount digital infrastructure onto. That's why when we actually pan around to a place where most people are not even looking, do we see the small cell mounted 18 feet high above the ground, onto another street light and traffic light combination. Surprisingly, the node actually gets quite close to the smartphone users without really being in their way. Walking just a few blocks up from Times Square, we stumble across the Manhattan at Times Square Hotel. It's not a particularly nice hotel, but what we found interesting is that the hotel would mount rooftop sites all over its exterior facade. Additionally, this hotel is placing the antennas right next to its logo, which gives the whole building and its brand a junky appearance. These first set of antennas are about 30 feet to 35 feet above ground. In exchange for attaching these sites to the hotel, the building's owner will usually be compensated with a long-term lease from a wireless carrier like Verizon or an infrastructure provider like Crown Castle. Panning further to the left and zooming in, we can see that the Manhattan Hotel has mounted more rooftop sites to its exterior, this time even higher at about 50 feet in elevation. Now let's take a ride through New York's Central Park and go small cell spotting. Given the aesthetic nature of the park, these small cells are even more hidden by being painted a dark green color to blend in with the surrounding trees. Small cells are typically hidden on this city infrastructure, which makes them easier to be accepted by local residents, particularly in places like parks. As we go through a few small cell examples in Central Park, keep an eye out for the base or bottom of the pole as well, which often takes the shape of a box-like structure. This is not just for support. Small cells actually require radios to be co-located near each antenna. So this is where the radios of the wireless carriers are typically housed. Ultimately, fiber, which is usually buried underground, transmits data back and forth between each of these small cells. Our final stop on this eight-part journey through New York is Columbia University, located above and to the west of Central Park, between 114th Street and 120th Street. Here, right at the entrance to the main campus, if we pan to the left, we see a small cell mounted on a combination of a street light and traffic light. It is important in these locations with historical buildings to find city infrastructure to mount small cells onto, because it is usually not possible to do so on historical buildings. In front of us is Columbia University's Butler Library, which was built between 1931 and 1934. Connectivity needs to be provided to students in this busy area, but it is unlikely that the university wants one of their most iconic buildings to be covered with antennas. Instead, we actually see rooftop sites mounted to the top of a building called Carman Hall, a first-year student residence. Additionally, we can see that the building has quite a number of rooftop sites on it, but the adjacent Butler Library does not. 
Finally, just outside of Columbia University is Morningside Park. Looking out over the park, we get a glimpse of a number of building rooftops in the area. We can see that a number of rooftop sites cover these residential buildings. These rooftop sites help densify network coverage and provide 4G LTE and 5G connectivity to New Yorkers living in the area. Hopefully that snapshot of New York City gave you a better understanding of how dense urban environments get their outdoor connectivity. So with that, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.